My oldest daughter, Karina, is 13 right now, but I can still remember the day she came home. She's nine years old, and she told me she hated math. Now, as someone whose entire career has been on the edge of leading edge technologies and business, I was both incredibly disappointed but saddened by hearing that. So I did what any MBA student would do. Was I did some research. One of the first things I found out was it, she wasn't the first girl to talk like that about math and science. In fact, there's some very helpful books out there that lead girls through this process. Although, I really like the second book title. That was more. But then I started doing more research on this, as wonderful as these books were. And it started to dawn on me that maybe this wasn't a gender issue. I mean, after all, how could the United States be ranked so poorly in math and science worldwide? Were the girls really dragging our scores down that bad? Or was there something more there? And so I started to think about what was this spark that seemed to be missing that I liked math and science so much. And I looked. And I saw the tools that they have to explore math and science with. And I thought, those are pretty cool. If I had that, I'd love this stuff. I mean, look at the stuff I played with. <laughs> OK, I didn't, but wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, <laughs> but something was clearly missing. There was a spark missing in math and science education. And I couldn't figure out what it was. So I, I dug back, and what, what excited me when I was growing up? Well, I remember Doc Edgerton's photos that would capture using stroboscopic uh, camera motion and uh, unlock it in a very accessible and visual way. I also remembered the powers of 10 video, which went from the m microscopic to the supernova size in an incredibly elegant nine minutes. This video is over 40 years old, but it's still probably one of the best tours of the known physical world. So of course I went online, and they're all on YouTube, and I showed them to my kids. And I also found such videos as the wonderful uh, Tacoma Narrows, where doesn't want to show, but we see the bridge go crazy and then blow up. And in the process of going online and trying to find these videos from my youth, I discovered something really fascinating. I found that the internet had enabled a whole new generation of people who were passionate about math and science to share their passion about math and science with others. I discovered some people in New Zealand who were teaching computer science without computers. I discovered researchers in Albania Teaching, using Hungarian dance to t teach shell sort algorithms. <laughs> I discovered a student who had, who had deconstructed an episode of My Little Pony for its physical impossibility. <laughs> in this case, Applejack, he concluded, had to be made of dark matter in order to set Rainbow Flash flying as far as she did, because if they were about <laughs> the same size, it wasn't possible. So I started to collect these and other videos that were really engaging and fun and taught people about math and science, and I thought about another how, how should I collect these and store them? And I decided to build a nonprofit. And to name it, I remembered another story from my youth, which was a story of, of a Schrodinger's cat used to discuss um, quantum entanglement, which I won't go into now. But effectively, the cat is both alive and dead at the same time, which I thought was a great name for a nonprofit. And I started Zombie Cat. And the first thing I did with Zombie Cat was a simple website called zombiecat.org which is effectively like a storeroom of multimedia uh, stories, images, websites, and other um, tools for students and to engage students and teachers. And this is really kind of leads to my closing thought. When I first started this, I thought this was a very modest, small project that it would just wouldn't get me far. But in talking to teachers and other students and other parents, I started to realize that being able to engage that initial spark, as small as it seemed, was incredibly important in what we were doing. And I guess that's the closing thought that I wanted to share with everybody here, which is we sometimes look at these problems that just seem so, mag the magnitude just seems so large at us. And sometimes all we have to do is find the spark that engages us and share it with others. And who knows what kind of conflagrations we can start. Thank you.